Hello, and welcome to Floating Polly. My name is Dr. Heatsink, and I'm here to continue the process of this uh, piece of fan art that I'm doing. Uh, fan art is on Sakuya Izayoi, she's a Toho character, uh, uh, from a series I, so, I love so much. So, just want to turn that down a little bit. Yeah, I hope that the uh, volume uh, levels are okay. Uh, if not, please let me know. And what we're going to be doing today, uh, just a quick recap for uh, last time. Um, but we've basically constructed the whole skeleton, so uh, all of that is basically ready now. The only thing was that off stream, I did have to change a few things, mainly um, the arm joint around here, if I were to just sort of highlight that. So all of the frills end up being added to this new shoulder roll bone. Like, well, there's a shoulder roll bone here and then this sort of like left um, shoulder lift bone. Um, so this will control the lift uh, that the shoulder has. So up and down sort of movement. And then the bone underneath the, it's in the hierarchy is gonna control things like independent rolls. So that um, when I roll the shoulder, I don't, necessarily affect the frills but when I lift the shoulder up I'm going to affect the frills uh, position somewhat anyway all right so um the final thing with that uh, just to bear in mind was that I wanted to redo the arm just because uh like the direction that the arm was uh rotating in was bothering me uh quite a bit so now that I've got it uh reset up that is now a perfectly straight line, so uh, it shouldn't interfere uh, too much with when we go to do forward kinematic controls, right? Okay, uh, the hand was redone a little bit as well, so um, we've accounted for another bone here that lets the thumb roll around a little bit, uh, because if you actually, you know, take your thumb and like squeeze between um, just underneath where the thumb is, but so where the, the uh, knuckles of the thumb then start to join up with the rest of your hand if you were to like squeeze there and move it around you do feel a little bit of movement it's a very small amount but that's what allows the thumb to sort of roll around anyway and then finally we've just got uh, another uh, bone so this uh, sort of um, almost like palm piece has been sort of split into two just for easier control uh, because when say for instance you um, like a I don't know a Tekken beckoning kind of pose so basically you you stretch out your, all your fingers and then bring them back in to say like you know come on like you're Captain Falcon or something and you'll notice that uh, you can actually bring in the pinky and the ring finger in and they move the uh, the rest of the hand a little bit more than the other uh, two fingers do so like you know you might it's more for like allowing some level of independent movement there so Right. Other than that, it was essentially just copying and pasting, well, mirroring over a whole bunch of bones. So, I really want to get started with controls now, um, as I've been dying to uh, start them for a while. So, we want to just start really nice and simple. Let's start by IKing, well, inverse, adding inverse kinematic controls to the arms, and then sort of leveling up from around there. Now, in order to start this, you just need to group the uh, skeleton into its own little group. Okay. Spelling it correctly the first time, however, is uh, a good thing. Okay, so this we're going to call just uh, geometry on the end of that. So we know what that is, and then we can group these two together to form the actual like character. So, like something like character underscore uh, Sakia. There we go. All right, pre prep done. Now we can actually start rigging. And over in here should be a IK uh, handler. So I create IK handler. I want to check the uh, the little box first before we begin. So create IK handle. The little box gives us a little um, settings menu over on the left. And what we want uh, is. Um, perhaps all the way from the start to the end um, might be applicable or we may need to start it from the actual shoulder uh, rotation and then finish at the hand. 
let's try it the whole way first. Because uh, a lot of this is um, all, you know, not just uh, a learning process for maybe the people watching, but it's also a learning process for me in that I've done this a number of times, but, you know, like there's always a better way of doing something. So what I've done is that I've clicked on the start, so I've allowed the shoulder roll to, to start, and then we've let the uh, forearm twist be the end. Um, however, we might finish it at the actual wrist. Get the names here. So over here, scroll all the way to find it. It's, this is the uh, right wrist where it ends. We also have our forearm twist and although it's selecting the IK handle, which is why that looks a little weird. Um, so let's close that bit down. I want the IK handles to be, oops, well, let's hide it for a start so we can just select the bone. So because it ends at the wrist here, I can still move the uh, forearm twist, you know, pretty uh, independently of that. This needs to be in its own group in here. So, IK handler. Oral. In it goes. Right, so with that there, we can now move this and it's going to move the arm. For better visual purposes, we could probably bind all of this to the um <laughs> the skeleton but um the only disclaimer with that is that we're only doing this like binding process just to visually see uh the animation easier we're not actually wait painting it that much not not until like it's actually sort of uh, done the rig i mean so in terms of our like ba really basic bind here we're not um too fussed about what settings it gives us we're not going to care too much about seeing that there's going to be like loads and loads of errors because there are go there are going to be. But you, you don't perfect your weight painting until your rig is done anyway. Because if you're changing bones around, you know, and then you unbind and rebind, that's a whole bunch of skinning that you're going to have to do again. And there's only so much that the history can do for you. So I'll probably finish in a bit. I didn't count how many bones there were, but I imagine that there are probably at least 200. <clears throat> probably. <laughs> YouTube not receiving enough for you. Is there, if there's any lag, can you just let me know? Team health seems to be okay, it's just uh, checking out if it is actually, if it's okay or not. Anyway, it could also be just because uh, the binding operation is taking a long time uh, and also that it's quite intensive. I should have bound this bit off screen actually. Well, then again, at some point I would have to rebind it anyway. So, unfortunate. Just letting it rebind.
takes a little while. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking the stream health as it's going. So I can see that it is actually replicating like my mouse moving. Okay, it's just that the uh, um, the process is quite heavy. So okay, that's fine. We can talk about some things while we're uh, waiting for it to bind. Uh, but yeah, like hope hopefully it won't take too long. Um, if it does, then we'll have to think of something else, or or just uh, you know kind of cope and. Um, like basically rig it without any kind of like uh, geometry movement going on. Um, in terms of the way that this works, as far as I understand, so long as um, the actual skeleton isn't being constrained by something else, um, then it's fine to construct the rig as we're doing this. It's just that uh, it you trade the trade off is that some things might be slower, but also you get a visual representation of what you're doing. So. It becomes a little bit easier to understand like when say for instance a bone is rotating and you don't want it to um that kind of thing um you know that that i think is kind of useful with that so um let's see let's see let's see quite a lot of objects and quite a lot of uh elements and bones so Naturally, it's something like this may take some time. So whenever you're doing this kind of thing, uh, I guess the best practice would be to, you know, prep a, a drink or something if it's particularly high poly and, um, you know, give it away. I'm sure you'll probably do the exact same thing for uh, Mixam Mixamo, I think it's, it is, on Adobe Mixamo. <laughs> but, uh, Okay. In there. <laughs> okay, so as long as it is actually. seem to take a very long time though all right so uh let's see it's random topics and uh well i guess not really random but i picked up a uh, uh, a new graphics card today. It's a 2070 Super, so I'm hoping that there's going to be a lot less lag on Substance Painter. Um, upgrading from a 1070. Um, I, I, I'm hoping that it's going to make painting in Substance Painter a lot easier, particularly since Substance Painter is so GPU bound. Um, so having something on the level of a almost but not quite 2080, um, I'm really hoping that's going to help you know it's a very affordable card it's very like a, like a uh you know you always want to be buying maybe the best that you can but uh you know if it if your range is you know that sort of uh 2070 or 1070 range uh it's not the worst thing and yeah, it's definitely the uh just above, I guess, the bang for book cards, which tend to be like the 2060 kind of uh, card, or the like 1660 or whichever, you know, things like that. Um, so, 
I'm still going. If um, it doesn't complete in like two minutes, what we'll do is that we'll gonna do the good old uh, task manager and then we'll just uh, run with it without uh, the skinning. Um, but we'll just have to be quite careful to notice when uh, bones are rotating in, in the wrong direction. 